In this episode of Western Pacific Weather 101, I'm going to discuss the history of Typhoon Recon in the Western Pacific and why it would be so important to bring it back. This debate is nothing new. For the past 30 years, there has been no sufficient recon in the Western Pacific, and specifically Typhoon Haiyan was considered one of the strongest storms in recent memory. But based on its pressure, it actually doesn't even rein in in the top 10. That is with a pressure of 895 hectopascals from JMA. But here's the thing, Typhoon Megi, which also hit the Philippines, had a pressure of 885 hectopascals. Now you might be asking, why was that one 10 lower than Typhoon Haiyan, which was considered stronger of a storm system? And the reason is, is because there was actually reconnaissance flight associated with the ITOP program from the USA that actually flew into Typhoon Megi, and it got an accurate reading of the storm, and that's why the pressure was, well, so much lower. A clear example of why recon flights in the Western Pacific just would be so useful. With that said, there used to actually be typhoon hunters in the Western Pacific from 1944 to 1987. This was the 54th Weather Reconnaissance Squadron based out of Guam. And one of their emblems, by the way, absolutely awesome. I love this. And it was a direct result of this weather squadron is why we had some of the strongest typhoons recorded, that's the key word, in history. In fact, Typhoon Tip, which was a massive storm, had a pressure of 870 hectopascals. That was measured after a Typhoon Hunter flew into it. Take a look at this. It is a list of the strongest typhoons based on pressure in recorded history since 1907. Notice a trend here. They all, all take place between 1944 and 1987, outside of the previously mentioned Typhoon Megi in 2010. Obviously, the strongest storms over the past 110 years did not just take place within that specific time frame. I would even argue with warming oceans and some of the strongest storms we've been seeing recently, many of them may have even taken place in the last 10 years. That is why the WMO, or the World Meteorological Organization, has been really pushing countries in the Western Pacific to kind of get together and start putting recon out there, at least for scientific purposes. A few years, Taiwan has actually stepped up with a typhoon reconnaissance program. That is Dot Star, and it does much of the same work that NOAA does in the United States. That basically is they fly aircraft around the edges of the storm. Japan has also been flying recon around storms in collaboration with the University of Okinawa, but that data is not released to the public and is only slated to run until 2020. Simply put though, the World Meteorological Organization really has been putting a call out for more aircraft reconnaissance because we have been seeing these stronger storms out in the Western Pacific. And as we just seen recently with Typhoon Halong, there is no way to actually measure that center pressure outside of satellite analysis using the Dvorak system, which has been increasing over years. But in reality, it's not nearly as accurate as actually getting a measurement inside the storm. With the large amount of military presence from the United States in Japan and Guam, one would think it would be rather simple to get the 54th Weather Squadron back up and running. It would definitely be a great use to forecasting and science as well. If you want to know more about the 54th Weather Squadron though, I'm going to put a link down below. It'll give you some, uh, some pretty good reading on it. I actually found it rather fascinating, the amount of weather data that was provided with it. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them down in the comment box below. I'm trying to do more of these video updates as well, so if you have any other suggestions of educational topics in the Western Pacific, please let me know. As always though, stay safe out there.